Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colts, and in this video, we're going to be walking through task management inside of Zoho CRM. So before I jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. I mean, if it sparks any feedback, comments or questions, leave those down in the comment section below as we do try to read through each and every one of those. Um, so with that, let us jump right on into the walkthrough. So in this video, we're going to cover three important components of using tasks inside of CRM. So first, we're going to walk through how to create a task manually and kind of what that's going to look like when we are inside of a particular record and we want to create a task for ourselves. We're also going to take a look at creating tasks via automation, so kind of centered around workflows. Then we're going to take a look at how to actually view and work on tasks using lists and home pages and even Kanban boards. So with that, let us jump into the system here and we'll go through creating a task manually. So starting here on the home page, I'm going to open up my deals list and I'm just going to pick any old deal here. So maybe we'll go to this first one and we're going to create a task. So over here on the left hand side, we have this section for open activities. This is where anything that is a task, a meeting or a call is going to live. And so within here, we'll go ahead and create a task. I do want to highlight you can also do this from the left-hand menu if you just click plus over here and create that task. Just a small handful of things that we need for each task. Of course, we're going to need to give it a subject. So let's say schedule, you know, discovery meeting. We're going to say when we want to have this done by with the due date. We can set priorities around these. We can assign this out to different people or to ourselves, just depending on the particular need for this task. We can set up reminders, which will go out either via an email or a pop-up in the system or even both. And we can set those up based on you know that due date itself or some amount of days before or after that due date. We can also set up repeating tasks and repeating reminders. Less common when you're talking about a CRM function, but if we jump into this repeat section, we can see we can actually have a task repeat daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly, or even custom. So some like, you know, X number of days daily, X number of weeks. Um, all of those are easily configurable here as we're going through and creating a task. They do add some additional fields under more fields here. If we did want to maybe connect this to someone else, so it's, it, you know, from the deal, it's grabbing that main contact, but maybe I want to connect it to somebody else you can do that here. We could also set it up at a status. It's always going to default to that not started status, but maybe this is something that you actually have already started and you want to make it in progress. That's totally fine. And then under the description, this is just an area to add any text that we'd like. And so oftentimes this might be instructions, reference documents, materials that might be necessary for completing this task. So we'll go ahead and save this task. And now it has added itself to this particular record. And so if I click into it, It'll give us a full breakdown of that task over here on the right hand side. It's going to show us some of the related information. So the contact and the deal that this task is relevant for. We can also access any of those fields from the task as well as more open structured notes down here at the bottom. And so if I do actually save one of these notes, it will roll up, right? So it'll show on that contact and on that deal record. Lastly, we can attach anything that we may need to a task. Generally, I like to recommend that you keep a lot of those attachments at like the parent record. So attach something to the deal instead, just so that you have that full visibility from the primary deal record. But now this task will live here connected to this deal up until we close it out. I do want to highlight just while we're in here, you can view these open activities a few different ways. So if you like them in the columns here, you can surely do that. Um, some people might say, you know what, I don't really use meetings or calls and I don't want to spend this amount of, um, you know, real estate on the screen showing these empty lists. And so we can change them over to maybe more of like a tab view or just a chronological view, which will show everything all in one list, regardless of what type of record it may be. Now, an important thing with tasks is that in a CRM, we're really assuming that tasks are going to be linked to a record, right? Generally, a task is about a deal for an account or for a particular contact or lead. You can create what I would call like a freestanding task, right? So something that is not connected to a contact or an account. 
Um, it's just a little bit less likely. Most of the time, you're going to be accessing a record and setting yourself up, up some type of follow-up or activity that needs to occur for that particular deal, account, or contact. And so really, it's just that simple to actually create a task related to a particular record. So what we're going to do next is jump on over to how to create a task automatically. So within Zoho, as you may expect, there are a lot of different ways that things can be done. So what I'm going to show you here, we're going to focus on workflow rules. That's normally how I will go about setting up task automation. You can do a similar thing through like blueprints or even like kiosk, uh, one of the new features. Um, but I'm going to focus on workflow rules for now. What I'll highlight is that a lot of what I'm going to show you would apply just as well for a different uh, pathway, like a blueprint or a kiosk. So here inside of a workflow rule, if I want to create a task automatically, first thing I need to do is select which module this is going to occur in. So I'm going to choose deals. Now, just as an example, I know I have a deal called value proposition. So we're going to do a task here that will trigger once we enter that stage. We'll create a workflow. Now for a workflow here, we've got a lot of tutorials on how to set these up. So I'm gonna go a little bit quickly here, but what we'll do is we'll say, if a deal is created or edited to match the stage of value proposition, we want to do a thing, right? And this is where a lot of those different automation options are gonna live is under these actions. In our case, we're gonna create an activity and we're gonna create a task. So you can have some saved activities, right? So these are ones that have been used in other workflows. We're going to create a new one, but just I always like to highlight if you have a task that might show up at different workflows, use a default option for it in case you ever want to rename it or, you know, reassign it. You'll have those in one consolidated place. So for us here to assign a task, we're going to send the value proposition document at this stage. When we're going through these options on an automated task, the due date works a little differently. So rather than setting a specific date, we're actually going to set a relative date. So a trigger date would be like when this task is created plus two days would be our due date, right? So we're just backdating a little bit. You can also make it relative to something on that deal. So if this was like following up on an onboarding, maybe you would make it based on closing date, right? Rather than based on just the date that this trigger happened to occur. Similar to when we're creating it manually, we can assign the status and the priority. We're going to leave those as not started and high. One thing I will highlight that's a little different here is when it gets into user assignment. So when you're making a task manually, uh, you'll need to select a user. When you're doing it with an automation, you can select a user or you can leave it unassigned, which will essentially default that task to the record owner. This is honestly the most common option when we're automating tasks. If a task is going to appear on a deal, it should probably be assigned to that deal owner. There are cases where you're not going to do this. Maybe you have like a specialist on your team that handles a certain step for all deals. In that case, you might want to hard code it and set it to them in particular. But in our case here, we're just going to leave it unassigned and have it be created for that deal owner. So I can save and associate this task. And now at that stage, it will go ahead and create it automatically. So let's take a look at that happening here for our deal. So here accessing back into our deals list, I'll open up this original deal that we we're working with and I'll move it over to this value proposition stage. And just like that, we can see that task is created. So that send value proposition document was created via that workflow and it adds itself right here into our open activities. One thing I do like to highlight, if you're ever curious about where a particular task came from, we can access the timeline and actually see that this task was assigned to a particular person via this workflow rule. So we'll always have that audit log of why did a particular thing happen and where did it come from and how do I source back to that original workflow, just in case you want to turn it off, rename the task or make any adjustments to it. Now, one more thing I do want to show just while we're kind of talking about tasks here is how can we create a dependent task? So let's say that after this value proposition document is uh, sent out, we always want to do something else, right? As a result of that being completed. So to do that, the workflow will work a little bit differently. Here inside of workflow rules, I'll create a new one. And we'll call this follow up on value proposition document. And here 
we'll set up a slightly different style of workflow. So rather than basing this on the deal, where an update to the deal is going to create a new task, here we're going to say that an update to a task is going to create a new task to create that dependency between the two. So here we'll say if the subject is send value proposition document and the status is completed, we'll create a new task. So here I'll just say, you know, follow up on value proposition document. Set this trigger day out about seven days and we will save and associate. So now if I go back over to that deal and I actually complete this send value proposition document, it will queue up that next task for me. So I'll go ahead and mark this as completed. And just like that, we now have our follow-up on value proposition document task. All of these are just driven purely through those workflows. Um, one of the nice things I will highlight is that when you set up one of those like task-to-task -task workflows, the system is smart enough to connect the new task to the same records. So it's automatically just going to assume that you want that follow-up task connected to the same deal, to the same contact, you know, whatever that may be that the first task was connected to. thought I would show that here just because it's not obvious that the CRM can support some task dependency. Um, but a lot of the times we do find that it's pretty useful, right? There are things that can't really happen until something else does. And this allows us to accomplish that. So now that we've covered how to create tasks both manually and automatically, let's jump into a few of the different ways that we can view and work on those tasks. Here on the homepage, this is one of my favorite ways to look at a task. This is kind of a unique section here under the classic view of the homepage. Unfortunately, we can't recreate this exact view anywhere else, but it does live here and provides a good place to actually work on these. So on the classic view, we can actually apply a bunch of different filters to these tasks to give us insights into which ones we may want to work on immediately. So if I were to look at like my overdue tasks, nothing is going to show up because the only open ones that I have are not overdue. They have due dates that are in the future. I can look at due dates that are tomorrow, or I can look at all open tasks that are assigned to me. So this view, I do really like it just because you have those quick toggles, really easy to prioritize through a couple different lists or views of tasks. But the reality is that a lot of the times people are going to be working on more of a custom homepage. Here I'm looking at my pipeline dashboard. The only thing that I have on it right now is actually a little kiosk view that we set up in another Zoho video that goes over how to use kiosk. But let's say that we wanted to add some task views to this homepage. So how would we go about doing that? Well, first things first, we're going to go over to our task list and we're going to determine which views would we like. So for me, the two views that I always like to see are all of my open tasks and all of my overdue tasks. Because for me, an overdue task is basically always going to take priority over something that is not due yet. So just to do this in a nice way, we will set up an example overdue task. Just so we have some data in here, we'll just set the due date as a few weeks back. And so now in our two views between my overdue tasks and my open tasks, we have a handful of pieces of data. So if we jump over to our homepage, let's show how we can actually set these up. So under customize homepage, we have the option to add or remove elements to most of our homepage options. We've got that pipeline dashboard. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. And we've got a ton of videos on dashboards in general. So I'm not going to go through each of these options. But for putting these lists of tasks, we're going to start with a custom view. So for our custom view, we'll select from the tasks module. And we're going to add my open tasks and my overdue tasks. Again, just kind of the two most important, at least as far as I'm concerned, when we're talking about task management. So for me, I'd probably put the overdue up at the top. Those are the ones that are the most pressing that we need to get to immediately. And then I'd probably put the my open tasks down here below, um, just because, of course, once we're done with the overdue task, we can get on to just the general open tasks. Another one that you may want is something like um, today's tasks. So if we look over here and we can see something on the side for my today's tasks, reason that sometimes you want this is that not all tasks can be done early, right? So something, for example, the follow up on a value proposal document, if that queues itself up today, we probably don't need to do that follow up today. 
And so you can create the my today's tasks as a separate view just to see the things that might be important for right now. So if I save that and we go back over to our homepage, go to our pipeline dashboard, just like that, those task lists have all been added. And all of these are going to have like links out to the other locations so I can access the deal or the contact just directly from this particular view. Now, the other way that we can view and look at tasks is via the task list itself. So here, of course, you'll have the option to filter based on any of the custom views that are available in your system. But we can also look at tasks via something like a Kanban view. So if I select the Kanban, it's going to make an assumption about what how we want to view this. Right now, I will highlight one of the only downsides of using the Kanban for tasks inside of CRM is just that it's not super flexible. In an ideal world, maybe you would want to sort these by the due date, or maybe you would want to sort these by the status of a particular task. Currently, that's not available just based on some of the data limitations. I think it's something that Zoho is working on, um, but we can still view them based on what they're related to. So like a task related to a deal or a task related to a leader contact, or maybe something that's related to neither of those or nothing at all. And we can work these directly through this page. So I can open up any of the tasks, I can edit the record, I can close them out directly from here as well. So maybe I know I'm done with this one, I'll just click close, and I'll mark it as completed. And so this view, it is nice. I do highlight a lot of the other list views a little bit more. I just think they're more useful for most people. Um, tasks are really based on status or due date. They're less based on you know what they happen to be related to. So if I were you and I was jumping into CRM and I wanted to do some task management here, I would definitely lean more towards creating list views and surfacing them on home pages or just potentially using the classic view, right? Because now you have a ton of different list view options right here without any configuration at all. So I think that should cover it here for our video on task management in CRM. If you did find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Make sure to leave the feedback, questions, and video requests down in the comment section as well as we try to read through each and every one of those. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.